So my name is BJ Schuler. I'm the defensive line coach here at Bryant High School. I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about some defensive line play. Um, I've been at Bryant uh, for, for three years now. In my first year, uh, we were extremely blessed. I inherited some, some really good defensive linemen. Um, the, the thing is, though, they had to buy in. They had to buy into me as, a, as their new coach. They had to buy into our program. Uh, they were very successful the first year or the year before I got there. But to take that next step, to be a championship caliber unit, uh, we, we had, they had to buy into to what, what we wanted them to do as a defensive line. Uh, they did that. We were able to take that next step. And two of those guys that, that we inherited actually went on. They're, they're still playing college football right now. Uh, so then going from the first year to the second year, uh, we saw some things that we wanted to improve on. Um, we had a couple guys that, that were players for us the year before. We had one returning starter, uh, one guy that was in the rotation, and a guy that spot played for us. Uh, but, but for them to get better, for them to improve, they had to buy into what we wanted them to do. Uh, that's hard, you know, whenever you're a senior uh, to buy in to something different whenever you were very successful the year before. They did that for us, uh, and it was huge. So then this last year, uh, graduated some guys. One of them's playing college football, or two of them are playing college football. We've got, uh, so we had one returning starter this year. Uh, it was tough. One guy that had played meaningful snaps before. Um, one, one of the starters at the beginning of the year was um, played, spot played at the end of football games, you know. Uh, one guy had never played on a Friday night before. Uh, so we had really two brand new, three brand new starters, two guys that had never played before uh, halfway through the season. We had a junior step up, uh, ended up playing big for us throughout the year. Uh, we had some young guys play, play for us in some big time roles uh, throughout the season, uh, but they were able to step up. They were big. They were able to, uh, to help us be what we want to be as a championship caliber unit. All right, so before we can talk about uh, some, some drills, got to talk about philosophy, all right? Uh, we are the front line of our unit, all right? As a defensive line, we are the first line of defense uh, against the offense, okay, for our whole defensive unit. It is our responsibility before anyone's to defend our end zone and shut down the opposition with violent force. It is our job first, before the linebackers, before the DBs, it is our job first to take care of business against the offense, all right? And we want to do that with a violent force. We want to have violent hands, violent hips, all right? We're going to look at that whenever we get into our, uh, into our drills. Um, also, with our style of defense, without great effort from us on every single play, the rest of our defense cannot function properly. So if we don't do our job as a defensive line, if, if we don't attack our man and we don't stay in our gap, then we mess it up for the linebackers. Yes, they're supposed to make it right for us, but if, if we attack our man, we get outside of our gap, now they're playing two gaps. They don't know where they're supposed to be. And that puts, it, uh, puts a lot of stress on those linebackers. We've got to do our job, play our gap, to make it easier for those guys. Same thing on a, on a pass play. All right, if we see pass. If we don't rush the passer, if we don't get pressure, you can't guard all day. All right, um, there's just no way you can. We have to get pressure on the quarterback to make it easier on our DBs. If we do not jam up offensive linemen, they will slide off and occupy our linebackers. That's what we just talked about. If we do not fire off the ball in pass situations and disrupt the quarterback, he will have time to complete passes and give our secondary problems. We have to be the disruptive force. We have to do our job. If we rerun, stay in our gap. If we see pass, we have to get pressure on the quarterback. We have to get to him to make it easier on our secondary. We will be fundamentally sound and win the battle in the trenches. Everything we do is going to be fundamentally sound. All right. I don't care if it's pre-practice, if it's individual drill, or if we're playing in the game. We are going to be fundamentally sound. We're not going to roll our own. When you start rolling your own is whenever you get beat. That is not going to happen to us as a unit. It takes a special type of athlete to play on the dark side of the football. You've got to have a different type of mentality. These athletes must have the four essential qualities of a Hornet defensive lineman. Those four qualities are, one, attitude, two, effort, three, teamwork, four, discipline. 
All right, attitude. I'm a huge attitude and effort guy. Your attitude should be a burning determination to give your best effort on every single play. Your attitude isn't, well, what about me? I got to get my sacks. I got to get my tackles. No. Your attitude is that you're going to give your best effort on every play, and it's going to let your teammate make the play if you're not making the play. All right? That's the type of attitude you got to have. It's got to be a positive, uh, reinforcing attitude to help your team out. All right, two, effort. Mentally and physically, we will not quit, ever. You will never, ever quit, all right? We want to physically and mentally dominate the opponent across from us. On every single snap, we want to attack our man, extend our hands. We want to get knocked back, knocked back, all right? Once we get knocked back, we are physically dominating him, all right? Once we physically dominate our man, we want to, to uh, dominate him mentally as well. We want to tell him, hey, great job. We'll see you next play. We're going to do it again. All right? We will never quit. Number three, teamwork. We work together as a unit on a larger team. So, like I said a second ago, it's not about me. It's not about my stacks. not about my stats. All right? It's about us as a defensive line, as a defensive unit as a whole. We're going to work together as four men up front to support our defensive unit. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to do our job so that they can do their job. Number four, discipline. Discipline might be the most important one on this list. All right. We all know the team that makes the least number of mistakes wins the game. All right. Whether that's the least number of turnovers, the least number of busts, the least number of loafs, whatever it is, the team with the least number of mistakes will win. So we focus on discipline all the time. Like I was saying, it doesn't matter if it's individual drill. It doesn't matter if it's... Um, team in practice and it doesn't matter if it's a game we're going to do the little things right 100 percent of the time all right and to be on this dark side of the football you must take every single offensive play as a personal insult that the other team is trying to score on you all right that's the mentality you have to have all right if you are not offended whenever that offense walks out on the field and says we're trying to score on you i don't want you on defense you don't have that kind of mentality. You don't have that in you. You don't have that about you to say, you're not scoring on me. That is what I want. I, I like it whenever a guy comes off on the sideline. We just got a three and out. Guy comes off on the sideline and is mad because they got eight yards and they shouldn't have gotten eight yards. That is what I want in a defensive lineman. That is the type of player that I want to have in my unit. All right. The, uh, the basis for every defensive lineman is stance. Stance is the most important thing. We work on stance first, all right? Whenever guys come to us in the spring, doesn't matter if they're freshmen coming up to be sophomores or if, uh, if they're a two-year starter coming back for their senior year, it doesn't matter. First thing we work on is stance, all right? Um, so in our stance, our feet should be slightly past shoulder width apart with the weight on the balls of our feet. Uh, if, if your feet are too wide or they're too narrow, then you can't go anywhere. You can't take a good first step. You can't fire out of your stance. That is not what we want, all right? Nice athletic position, weight on the balls of our feet. Again, if the weight's on our heels, we can't go anywhere. We have to shift our weight forward before we can fire out, and that's not what we want. It's a waste of time, all right? Our near foot, so that the foot to our man should be the one that's slightly back, all right? Uh, we teach zero step here at Bryant. What that means is we read and react, okay? Um, one of those mistakes that, that we wanted to correct, correct after our first season um, was, was taking wrong steps, taking false steps, all right? We were really good at taking a six-inch power step, but our six-inch power step sometimes put us in a wrong situation, put us in the wrong place. Uh, at the snap of the football, when we took our first step, we were beat. We were beat on a block, and that's not what we wanted, so we transitioned into this zero step, all right? So like I was saying, your near foot should be slightly back, all right? I really like it. I, I let my guys to be comfortable, okay? It doesn't matter to me, um, but as long as their toe is to their midfoot or to their heel, that's fine, okay? Whatever's comfortable, as long as they can still take the correct step. All right, once your feet are right, then we got to get down into our stance. To get down into our stance, we're going to put our near hand to our man. Okay? Uh, easy teaching cue that I have for that is called hand to man. All right? A lot of times, young guys, 
they want to put one hand down. If they're right hand dominant, they want to put that right hand down all the time. Uh, or if they played uh, defensive end on the right and they're used to putting their left hand down, that's what they want to do. That's not, we got we to gotta correct that. We got to get that out of their system. Uh, so my, my teaching cue for that is hand to man. It's a quick, easy thing that I can say uh, in practice at any point to, to jog their memory and say, oh yeah, I got to switch my hands. All right, so I'm going to put my near hand down. My off hand should be able to sweep the grass. Again, I, like I said, I, I like it whenever my guys are comfortable, all right? And so, so they can sweep the, gr the grass, all right? It, if that's not comfortable to them, I allow them to, to put their hand uh, in front of their face mask. There's two ways to look at it, all right? If your hand's in front of your face mask, it's up, it's ready to fire, ready to extend. Uh, the other thing to look at it, though, is if it's up here, then whenever you punch, your hands can go out wide, all right? So, so if our guys get into that situation, uh, we will correct them and we'll have them sweep the grass so that their hands are together. This is their down hand. This is their off hand, all right? It's able to sweep that grass. It's close now. Whenever they punch, their hands are close uh, and they're not getting out wide, all right? So we will make that decision if they're having a problem of getting their hands out wide. Like I said, I like for them to be comfortable. I, uh, they can be either in a four-point stance or a three-point stance. It doesn't matter. Uh, if they're in that four-point stance, though, that offhand is still able to sweep the grass. There's not a whole lot of weight on that, that offhand. Uh, their weight distribution should be just like they're in a three-point stance. They just have that hand down there for a little bit of balance purposes. That's it. And then, of course, this is one of our exceptions. This is one of the things that, that has to be done no matter what. Um, like I said, I like them to be comfortable. No matter what, though, their butt has to be slightly higher than their helmet. If their butt is below their helmet, there's no way they're going to they're gonna fire off the ball properly. Uh, yes, they can see a lot more, but it just doesn't give them a, a good explosion out of their stance, and that's not what we want. Okay, We want, we want explosion coming out of their stance. All right, so here's our uh, three-point stance showing you from the side. You can see his feet slightly past shoulder width apart. All right, his left foot, so his man is on his left. He's shaded right. His man will be on the bottom of the screen. His left foot is back. His near hand down, hand to man. Bend in the knee, but slightly above his helmet. His off hand is in front of his face mask, ready to fire. All right, good position. Like I said, if we get into a habit, of shooting our hands out wide, then we'll get that hand down here ready to go. All right, good position right here. This is a good stance. Let the, the camera move around. You can see it from the front. Again, he's in a good position right here to fire out, strike with violent force using his hands and hips. Good three-point stance. Uh, this, is, this is what we do on first and second down, and then we do it on third and medium and, and less. All right, our four-point stance. All right, same thing. You can see, let me go back real quick. All right, you look, okay, three-point stance, four-point stance. You can't tell much of a difference in his stance other than his offhand is down. All right, his butt is still slightly above his helmet. He's still got bend in his knees. His feet are still in the exact same position. All right, slightly past shoulder width apart, near foot back, good position, all right? Like I said, his offhand is down. If he wanted to, he could sweep the grass, all right, uh, making sure that he doesn't have too much weight on that right hand. Again, his man, uh, he shaded his right. His man is on his left at the bottom of the screen. Um, good four-point stance that, again, we will use on first and second down, and we'll use it on third and medium and less. Again, let the camera go around. You can see good stance, all right. He could sit here for a long period of time because this stance is comfortable and that's what we want. Um, we want to be comfortable so that we can fire out strong and powerful. All right, now moving on to our everyday drills. Okay, um, we do these drills every day. I don't care if it's in the spring. I don't care if it's in the summer. I don't care if we're in fall camp. I don't care if it's the last week of the season. We're going to do these four drills every day. We might not do Every one of them, but we're going to do some type of variation of each one of these drills every single day. Before I talk about them, 
uh, something that I really think every coach should do, name your drills. All right, it's extremely important for you to name your drills. Why? Well, whenever you say a name of a drill, your guys know exactly what to do. They can set the drill up for you. All right, it's transition time. Speed's time up in practice. If, if you don't name your drills and you as the coach have to set up a drill every time and your guys are standing there messing around, um, then they're not getting better. And that's not what we want. We want to get better every chance we get. All right. Um, so again, name your drills. So the, the four main drills we do, there's sled work, it's block recognition, some type of block destruction drill, and some type of pass rush drill. All right. My names that I use, hip explode. All right. As soon as I say hip explode, the guys know they're going to the sled. All right. Whether the sled's on the practice field, uh, in the grass field, wherever, they know they're running to that sled and they know what we're going to start with. They know, know everything we're going to do. All right. Uh, my block recognition, we call it man reads. Again, as soon as we get done with the sled, uh, I say, all right, man reads. And guys know exactly where to go. They know where they're going to be on the field. Uh, they partner up. And we'll talk about man reads later. Uh, but, but they know exactly what to do. All right. Uh, then block destroy. All right. I've got a couple variations on block destroy that I'm going to talk about. And then pass rush. Okay. Got multiple pass rushes that we could talk about all day. We don't have the time for that. All right. So first thing. All right. Hip explode. Hip explode. This is our sled work. This is the foundational drill we use for hand placement and hip explosion. Okay. So whenever we do hip explode, we focus on two big things, hand placement and our punch and hip explosion. Okay. And we're going to look at that here in a second. You could do this a couple different ways. All right. You could do this with uh, a sled or partners, depending on what equipment you have. Uh, obviously, if you do it with partners, you'd like to have some type of uh, shield pad or your shoulder pads on. Uh, if you have a sled, that sled is, is important. Okay, Sled is super heavy. Uh, you want to punch that sled. It allows you to have strong, powerful, violent hands as a defensive lineman, which is what you want to have. All right. So one of the things that, that we wanted to improve on was our hands and our hips. All right. Uh, and so we really, we really moved on, or we really uh, married the, the sled. Like I said, we do it every single day. We do this progression every single day. It doesn't matter when. We do the same three, uh, three drills, this three-step progression every single day. All right. First one, six point, two point, and then four point. All right. Six point. All right. I think most people know what a six point stance is, but in case you don't, you're on your hands, your knees, and your feet. All right. Then after six point explode, we go into two point explode. You're in a good standing athletic position. Uh, we'll look at that here in a second. And then four point explode. All right, I call it four point because I'm a little bit OCD. I like uh, the even numbers. And so we go six to four. All right, four point is really your normal stance. If your normal stance is a three point stance, get in a three point stance whenever you do four point explode. All right, so starting right here, okay. Six point explode, like I said, six point stance, we're on both hands, both knees, both feet. All right, six points of contact, six point explode. What we wanna make sure we do, all right, we wanna make sure that our hips are back onto our heels. All right, this is supposed to simulate us coming out of our stance. All right, like I said, this is our foundational drill for everything we do, okay? So the very first thing, we're gonna make sure we have proper hand placement. You can see our, our uh, sled says surge on it, all right? So I tell our guys to put your inside hand, in this case, that's his left hand, he's shaded right, put your inside hand on that R, okay? I talk about the V of the neck all the time. I want your hand on the V of the neck, okay? Somebody asks, well, what's the V of the neck? Well, if you look at a jersey or you look at shoulder pads, they make a V, that's the V of the neck, all right? So he's gonna put his inside hand on that R, preferably thumb up. Um, if he doesn't go thumb up, I'm okay with a slight tilt, only because if you look at that V of the neck, it's at about a 45 degree angle. So I really want them grabbing that, uh, that breastplate, or sorry, the V of the neck. All right, so for defensive tackles, inside hand on the V of the neck, outside hand is gonna be in the armpit, okay? Uh, grabbing that breastplate gives us a good point of contact. We're going to fully extend, okay? We're a defensive end, a little bit different. Inside hand still on the V of that neck, Outside hand can go from the breastplate all the way out to the bicep, okay? Um, the reason for that, 
If you get your hand on the breastplate all the time, that offensive lineman's able to get his outside hand and he's able to hook you or seal you and you can get reached or pinned. We don't want that. We don't want either one of those things. Um, so I, so we're really okay with having your hand either on the breastplate or on that bicep. Either one of those will work, all right? So like I said, going back to this drill, his hips are back on his heels. He's ready to simulate coming out of his stance. Slow motion, you look, all right? Inside hand on that R, perfect. On the V of the neck, his hand's at that slight tilt. I'd really like to see thumb up, over-exaggerate it for, for drill purposes, all right? But not a bad position on his left hand. His right hand's grabbing that breastplate, perfect. Great job. As soon as he strikes, he's also shooting his hips, okay? His hips are exploding forward. If you look, his arms are not fully exploded. His hips have already come, or his, his arms are not fully extended, excuse me, and hit, his hips are already coming forward, all right? Now, his arms are fully extended, great. His hips are also fully extended, okay? We wanna shoot our hips and hands at the exact same time. Have violent hips, violent hands, okay? Um, we wanna do this, I feel like this is a more powerful movement than if you just put your hands out or you take a step. Um, like I said, we wanna be that read and react. We wanna make sure we're in a good situation. All right, uh, post snap, we don't wanna put ourselves in a bad situation so that we can get blocked. We wanna be in a good situation so we can win our block. All right, once he's got his hands in the right position, got his hips fully extended, uh, arms fully extended, he's gonna get his head in his gap. All right, it's a good job right here. Let you watch it through a couple times. Again, at the snap of the football. All right, so let me, let me talk about that real quick. You can do a couple things. You can go on the football. Uh, you can go on your foot. You can go on a cadence. You can go on a whistle, however you want to do it. Uh, at the snap of the football, he shoots his hands and hips at the same time, gets full extension, head in his gap. Great job. Okay, this is before he ever takes a step because, like I said, we're read and react. We're reading, doing this, and then we react with our step. All right? Of course, he's on the right. We go to the left before we go on a two-point explode, but for time purposes, moving on to two-point explode. All right? Let me start over from the top. All right, right here. Good athletic position. So this is a position we're coming out of our stance. Okay? We went from being on a six-point all right, using our hips and our hands. Now we're mid explosion, okay? We've already fired off the football. This is supposed to simulate mid explosion, okay? More of that uh, linebacker position, athletic stance. Again, we're going on a football here. As soon as that ball moves, one thing I'd like to see is I'd like to see him squatted down a little bit more um, so that he doesn't have to sink before he goes. He's kind of rolling into this. I'd like to see more hip explosion at the, at the beginning. Um, but, all right, he puts his hands on his man where he's supposed to. His left hand, his inside hand is a little off right here. I'd like to see it in a little bit more uh, on the middle of that pad, on the V of the neck. But this isn't a terrible position. These sleds um, aren't as wide as a lot of offensive linemen, so that's okay right there. One critique I would have, me always coaching, I'd like to see that thumb up on that left hand a little bit more. Uh, but it's not bad. Again, it's kind of angled towards that V of the neck so he can grab at that 45 degree angle. All right. Then his right hand, his right hand's in a good position. He's in the armpit. He's a defensive end. Um, it would be better if he was on that bicep, but these sleds, your hand's going to fall off that shoulder right there. So I'm okay with him putting it on that breastplate for now. Uh, and whenever we go live action, um, we're gonna, we're gonna shift and put our hand on, our, uh, on uh, the offensive lineman's bicep. All right, so from here, as soon as he makes contact, he's also shooting it, excuse me, he's also shooting his hips forward, all right? Hips and hands at the same time. Look, his hands have not fully extended, okay? So he's not just punching with his arms, he's punching with his hips, all right? So now he's, Fully extended on the hips, now he fully extends his arms. It's all one fluid motion. Let me go back, all right? It's all one fluid motion. Okay, now he's fully extended. His hips are out, his arms are out. He's up on his tiptoes, that's a great job. Now he's gonna react to whatever block he gets, take a step. His head's already in his gap. That's just something we're trying to focus on, making sure we stay in our gap. 
good position right here on two point explode. Again, before we move on to six point explode, we'd go to our left, save time. We don't have that on here. All right, now four point explode. All right, he's in a good four point stance. He's more of a four point stance guy than a three point stance. That's fine. All right, still that offhand, able to sweep, sweep that grass. Good position right here. Uh, he's shaded to the right, man to his, is to his left. So most of my weight should be on my left hand, left foot back, but slightly above my helmet. We're in a good position right here. All right. So uh, teaching cue on this one. All right. The sled doesn't move. Okay. So we treat this as a base block. All right. When we go into our block recognition, which we're going to get into uh, on the next couple slides, that's whenever we're going to going to put what we're doing here in our sled work into a moving target. Okay. But we're going to start uh, treating this like it's a base block. Okay. So our man steps right at us. One thing I'd like to see right here, he takes his step before his hips come forward. I'd really like to see his hips come forward just like on two point explode uh, with his hands. All right. But it's not bad. Like I said, we're treating this like it's a base block. He knows that he's a three year guy. Uh, so he's already kind of cheating it a little bit, taking that step with his left foot. Not bad. All right. Left hand did a little better this time. It's on the V of that neck. I'd like to see a little more of that thumb up. Right hand in the breastplate. Good job. Again, if you look, before he fully extends his arms, his hips are getting extended. Now, he is at full extension right here. This is a more powerful position. Okay, he's up on his toes. His legs are extended. Hips extended. Arms extended. He is extremely powerful in this position right here. Now, obviously, he's going to keep his feet moving. Whenever we do... Uh, four point explode, I make sure to tell my guys two good steps, all right, because we can't drive that sled a um, couple times. If it's out in the open, uh, we'll, you know, we'll take four good steps and we'll try to drive it a couple steps uh, so that we don't finish in this position. Uh, but this is the right position. He is in the correct position right now if that uh, for a non-moving target, okay? You can see he's finishing with his head and his gap. It's a good job. Let you watch this one through a couple times. Again, base block, so he takes that step. As soon as he shoots his hips in his hands, now he's taking that step with it. Full extension, good job. All right, then we're going to go to the left side. As soon as we get done with this, we're moving on to man reads. All right, like I said, man reads, that's our block recognition drill. All right, um, we do this with partners. Uh, like I said, name your drill so guys know what's going on. As soon as I say man reads, they know where they're going on the field. They get a partner for the day. <clears throat> they line up. They're ready to go. Okay. So um, before I can explain this drill to you, you got to talk about the blocks that we see, the blocks that we get. Okay. We teach our guys here at Bryant uh, four blocks. There are only four blocks you're going to see. It's a base block, reach block, a down block, and a pass set. Okay, that's it. You offensive guys right now, offensive guys in, in our office, say there's a whole lot more than that. What if it's a zone? What if it's a scoop? What about a combo, double, duo, all that stuff? We don't care, okay? Uh, in my opinion, analysis leads to paralysis. If you think too much, you're going to play slow. We don't want to play slow, okay? We want to play fast, so we narrow it down. There's only four blocks that we're going to see, okay? Uh, again, those are base, reach, down, and pass. So a base block. Anytime our man steps directly at us, we consider that a base block. Okay, I don't care if it's a zone, um, an ISO block, I do not care what it is. If he steps directly at us, that is a base block to us. Okay, and we're going to talk about what we do uh, on the next slide. All right, a reach block. Anytime our man attempts to get outside of us. Okay, so if I'm shaded right, my man's on the left. If he's trying to get outside of me to my right, he's trying to hook me, he's trying to seal me, whatever. That is a reach block to us, okay? You have to know the difference between a base and a reach. All right, a base block, he's gonna step towards you. A reach block, he's gonna step laterally, uh, or he's gonna take some type of a bucket step, okay? So if you see either one of those two things, that's a reach block, all right? The next one is a down block. Anytime our man goes away from us, it's a down block. I don't care if he's pulling away from us, if it's a true down block, or if he's reaching away from us, we treat it like it's a down block. It puts us in the same situation as if we treated it like it was whatever it is, 
okay? Uh, and so again, to not think too much, we just call everything a down block. It makes it easy for us, all right? Uh, those are the three blocks we're gonna work in our block recognition drill. Pass, that's our fourth one. Anytime we see a high hat, all right? We treat that as a pass block. Uh, we will practice this in our pass rush drills. We don't do this in our block recognition drills. Uh, we, I, we split uh, run and pass, and we work on these three run blocks, then we work on our, our pass block with our pass rush moves. All right, so the first one, okay? We have a base block right here, all right? We're in man reads. Um, so this is our individual time, all right? Again, like I said, we're partnered up. We've got these great padded vests right here. This is a great investment. Uh, BSN hooked us up. Uh, they got us these last year. Uh, we weren't able to use them a whole lot, but we're gonna be able to use them this year. Uh, we can use them in the spring, in the summer, uh, when we're not wearing shoulder pads. Uh, it's, a, it's a great investment to have. It, it allows you to put your hands right again on that V of the neck, and then it, it's like a breastplate right there. So it's a great job, okay? Uh, anyway, base block, okay? So again, you look at the offensive lineman, he's gonna step right at me. That's a base block, okay? Whenever I see a base block, well, first off, I'm still shooting my hands and my hips first, okay? He sees that, step, that uh, foot step right at him, I'm taking a six inch power step. So even though we're a read and react defense, our first step is still a six inch power step on a base block, all right? So again, you can see it right here. Again, I'd really kinda like to see his left hand in between those two nines, but that's all right, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can see his right hand is on that breastplate right there, okay? So he took his first step with his near foot, good job, his second step squares him up, and he keeps going, he's square. Good job, all right, he extends, head in his gap. Good job, that's a base block, all right? Now, how's this transition into practice? Okay, right here, this is who we're looking at, his defensive tackle, okay? That guard, he doesn't even take much of a step at him, but the step he takes, that tells us that's a base block, all right? Of course, it's from the offensive perspective, so it's kind of hard to see hand placement, but he puts his left hand in the, on the V of the neck in the middle of his chest, right hand goes on the breastplate. One thing, again, me always coaching, one thing I'd like to see is where his head does not cross his man, but that's all right because he extends, gets his head in his gap, great job. When he extends, he actually puts that offensive guard into the puller's path, blows up the puller, helps our defensive end out. Our defensive end helps out our outside linebacker. Great job right here by our defensive tackle, okay? Works flat down the line. I'd like to see him get in on this tackle at the end. Not bad. We'll watch it uh, full speed. Extend, get off the block, work down the line, good job. Good job reading base block, seeing it, and doing your job. All right? How does it translate into a game? All right? State championship game against North Little Rock uh, two years ago. Uh, all right, we're looking at this defensive tackle right here. Okay? Again, we get a base block, steps right at us. If I can work the computer. All right? He gets a, uh, we get that base block, he steps right at us, so we take our right step, uh, right foot, because that's our near foot, go right, take our six inch power step right to the middle of our man, right hand on the V of the neck, left hand on the breastplate, it's kind of hard to see, then take our left, hand, our left foot, we're going to square up, extend, my bad, extend, boom, you see that knock back, his head goes back, hand, head goes in our gap. One thing, his base is a little narrow. I'd like to see a little bit wider of a, of a base. Good job on the base block. Push him into the running back. You don't make the tackle, but you make the play. All because all he did was read base. He put his hands where he was supposed to be. He extended. He took his two steps. He created knock back, knock back created a new line of scrimmage. He makes the play. Good job. We'll watch it full speed. You go back to the top, right here. Good job, he makes the play. All right, now, 
down block. Like I said, down block. Anytime anybody steps away from us, okay? Anytime anybody goes away from us, we've got a down block. All right, so you look, boom, he steps away from us. I don't care if this is a reach away. I don't care if it's a pull, whatever, all right? We're still shooting our hips and our hands. You can see his hands go out. You can kind of see that elbow go out. I don't really like that. Elbows in, thumbs up. Shoot those hips. Takes that six inch power step. Not a bad job. Try to close down all that space you've got right there. Good job. Go flat down the line. If you get a down block, one of two things is happening. You're either getting red or somebody else is coming to block you. All right, so get your eyes inside. Good job. All right, translates into practice. All right, we're looking at this defensive end right here. All right, down block, boom, take his good steps. Shoot his hips and his hands. Close down all that space. If this quarterback wanted to cut back, let me go back just a little bit. If this quarterback wants to cut back right now, there's not enough space there. We're making the tackle. Good job. All right. Another one. This time we're right here. We get another down block. Now somebody's pulling to kick us out. All right. Somebody else is coming to block us. One thing, he turns his shoulders too soon. But other than that, he does a good job. He takes the correct step. He takes the correct step right here, gets hands on his man, help our linebacker out. He goes and blows that puller up. Now we got two for one, whoever the ball carrier is. Great job. Outside linebacker, Mike linebacker fit, fought over the top because we get, got our hands on our man. Good job. Defensive end. You don't make the tackle, you make the play. All right, how does it transition to a game? Here we are against Central uh, a couple years ago, three years ago. Nope, two years ago. All right, we're right here, okay? We get a down block, they're running power read. All right, we get a down block, we take a good step, boom, right there, hands on our man, help our Mike linebacker out. I'd like to see him keep his shoulders just a little bit more square so that as soon as he sees this pull, or this give, excuse me, this give, he can put his foot in the ground, he can go help his buddy out right here, all right? If the quarterback wanted to pull it, there's no space in between me and my man. Quarterback has nowhere to go. Easy tackle for us. Good job. All right. Now, reach block. Okay, like I said, reach block. Anything trying to get outside of me. So we have to know the difference between him taking this foot and stepping at me, him taking that foot and trying to go lateral or bucket and trying to get outside of me. Okay? So we see it. This is really where we're a little bit different. All right? He sees reach. Now he's actually going to step with his outside foot. Okay, instead of stepping with his near foot, he's going to step with that outside foot. He's still shooting his hands and his hips. He knows it's reach. He knows it's outside run. So he's trying to keep his outside hand free because he has outside contain. All right, going to shoot that inside hand. Again, I'd really like to see elbow in, thumb up. Shoot that inside hand. Now he keeps outside contain. Of course, he takes that second step right there with that left foot. Keep his shoulder square. Good job. I'll show you. Whole thing full speed. Good job. That's a reach block. All right, going into practice. Well, here we are right here. Great job, okay? Takes, it's hard to see again, offensive perspective, but he takes a step with his right foot. Boom, fire that inside hand. All right, keep his outside hand free. Now he's got outside contain. He's going to force cut back wherever to either his buddies inside or to his linebackers. Good job up front. All right, going to a game. All right, we're right here. Defensive tackle working to reach block on the backside. He's head up. Again, anything trying to get outside of me is a reach. Okay, kind of hard to see because this linebacker, but boom, he takes that right step. I'd like to see him gain a little bit more ground, but that's not bad. He's a little beat right now, but because he's taking the correct steps, it takes him two or three steps to get there instead of three, four, five steps to get there. He's able to work back over the top, stay in his gap, 
if it was to cut back, it's going to come right back to him. Good job on his part. All right, now, next thing we do is block destroy. Okay, we do a block destruction drill. We do one of these every day. We're either going to do block destruction with a base block, with a reach block, or a double team. Okay, you can throw in a tackle. I like to throw it in whenever we do base and reach. All right, so our base block, we're going to start out locked up right here where I've already got our hands on our man, everything. This is after our first two steps. Okay, so we're locked up. We know it's a base block. So as soon as you blow the whistle, you say hit, whatever. He extends, great extension, head in his gap. You as a coach are going to tell the running back which way to go. This time I told him to go to the right. He goes into our gap. I get off my block. All right, right here he's working a, a pull arm over. Good, or a pull chop. Good job. Take a good angle. The one thing I don't like right here is he gets his head in front. That's not how we teach it. Uh, he gets it fixed on the next drill, though. All right, watch it full. One time, there you go. Not bad. All right, now, base block again, start out locked up. This time, he's gonna go away from us. He's not going into our gap. So, what do we have to do? We extend, good job, boom. Again, he works that, that uh, pull arm over, that pull chop. After I told the running back go left, He's going to take a good angle, come in, head behind, make a tackle, shoot your hips, good job. However you teach tackling, you can work on it right here. It's a way to, to cheat and to, to get an extra, extra tackling reps in, uh, whether they're live going all the way to the ground or not. It's a good way to do that and to get those extra reps. All right, watch it all the way through one time. Good job. Both of those block destroy, base block. All right, put it in on practice. We're looking at this D tackle right here. All right, base block, boom, extend. He works over the top, okay? This is technically his gap right here, but he extends, gets his head in his gap. He sees the running back commit, so he works over the top, gets it off the block. I'd really like to see him get in on that tackle. I'd like to see him finish with either a rip or a chop, a violent rip or a violent chop uh, to get off this block right here, but not a bad job. We got a one-on-one -on -one tackle with our Mike linebacker, our outside linebackers fitting in. We should be third one right there ready to join in on that tackle. All right, now we got a game. This is one of those guys I was talking about, I was blessed with. Um, good football player. All right, looking at him right here. All right, base block. One thing, this is one of those things I said we were really good at taking those six inch power steps. Takes his six inch power step inside. One thing, he gets a little bit too much inside with his head, but he was so strong with his punch and his hips, he was able to get back into his gap, outside contain. He gets off the block. He makes a tackle. Great job. We'll watch it all the way through one time. Boom. Punch, extend, get off the block, make a tackle. Great job. TFL, first play of the game. Great job. Sets the tone early. That's what I like to see. All right, now reach block. Okay, uh, I like to start out in a reach block where we're defeated. Okay, so he's trying to reach me to my right. Okay, this is technically my gap. Okay, like I said, we start out after our first two steps. He's got me beat. He's got me reached. I'm going to start out locked up. What do I have to do? I have to push with my right hand, pull with my left hand, work back over the top, get back into my gap. All right, that's what he does right here. Boom, good job. He finishes with that arm over again. Take a good angle, just like we did on a base block, head behind. Good job. All right, see it in practice. My bad, go back. Where are we at, my bad. All right, we're right here at this D-tackle again. Okay. He gets reached, one thing, he kind of pivots. I don't really like seeing his pivot on his front foot. He really needs to work on his stance, but I'd like to see him take that, take a good step right there. But he does a good job. He keeps his gap. He extends. Running backs right there. He's able to get in on the play. We're right here. He's able to get in on the tackle. Good job. All right. Transition into a game. All right. Again at this D tackle.
All right. This is against uh, Trinity Christian from Texas. Takes that reach block. We get reached, but he does a good job fighting over the top, extending with that right arm, pulling with that left arm, getting back into his gap, and he makes the tackle. Good job. We'll watch it through one time. Good job. All right. Now, double team. Okay. So, this is our man. All right. In this setup, uh, we're, we've got three guys. Okay. We take that, the, the rabbit or the running back, move him up here as a second offensive lineman. This is my man. I'm going to attack my man, get my, just like normal, just like it's a base block. All right. Good job. I see a double team, okay? I got to know the difference between a double and a cut. We, if we're getting a cut, we don't want to do this, okay? If we're getting cut, we don't want to get skinny. If we get a double, we want to try to get skinny. We do not want to allow this man to overtake us, okay? We do not want that to happen. So he takes a good first step. He's, again, he's a system guy, three-year guy. He understands double team. He's able to take that left step with that second, or that left foot with that second step get in between those two guys, get skinny with his shoulders, get in the gap, good job. All right, running low on time, so I'm gonna hurry through this. All right, looking at this D tackle right here. All right, again, good job. I don't, he gets a little widened, but not bad, stays in his gap, get off the block, get in on the tackle, force it out to our linebacker, good job. Okay, get in onto a game. Another one of those guys that I was blessed with Big number 99 right here in the middle. Watch this view real quick. Don't let him overtake you. Good job. Force it outside. All right. Watch the end zone shot. Again, big number 99 in the middle. All right. Don't let, don't get overtaken. Good job. Nope, can't come into my gap. My defensive end says, good job. Or says, uh, says, thank you. He tries to take his gap. Nope, he ends up making the tackle. He made the play. Good job. Good job up front. All right, pass rush. Like I said, we could stand here and talk about pass rush all day. We don't have that type of time, okay? Um, what you should do is you should create a tool bag of moves that you build on, okay? Whether that tool bag is four or five moves, whether it's 10 moves, it doesn't matter. Create a tool bag of moves that start out basic and work up, okay? That get more creative the more you go, okay? Uh, every guy you have might not work every, every move that you teach them, all right? They're going to have three to four moves themselves that they like. Those three to four moves, they need to have at least one speed move, one power move, one counter move, okay? It really doesn't matter what those moves are as long as they work for those guys, okay? And then what we do is we work on one to two moves each day. Um, we pick them out, we work on them to the right side, work on them to the left side. We get as many reps in as we can in the amount of time we have. Um, again, all the moves that we teach, not everybody works, okay? Uh, they work what they're comfortable with, and so I, like I said, we could talk about this all day. We don't have time to, all right? Again, my name is BJ Schuler. Um, I enjoy talking about D-line, so if you ever want to uh, give me a call or, or uh, try to talk more about defensive line, you can send me an email. My email is bschuler, that's B-S-C-H-U-L-L-E-R, at bryantschools.org. Uh, you can send me a text. I'm good about, about answering texts pretty quickly. Not the best with answering phone calls, but if you text me, we can set up, um, we can set up some time to, to talk, maybe do a Zoom. Uh, something like that if you're interested in talking about uh, more defensive line play. Um, appreciate your time. Thank you.